This video will demonstrate the effects of human papillomavirus, or HPV, on the human cervix. The cervix is part of the uterus, or womb, where the baby develops. The cervix is just the narrowed end of the uterus, and it's located at the end of the vagina. Here's the uterus. The baby develops within the body of the uterus, and the cervix is the narrowed portion. The smooth, shiny area of the cervix is located at the end of the vagina. The uterine cavity is seen here, connecting to the cervical canal. Here's a closer look at the cervix. Menstrual discharge passes through the cervix. During reproduction, sperm will travel through the cervix as well. The human papillomavirus most commonly infects cells of the ectocervix. A closer look at the ectocervix reveals epithelium, which sits on connective tissue. Here we flip the orientation to better visualize the epithelium of the ectocervix. The epithelium consists of multiple cell layers which flatten out, and this is known as squamous epithelium. The epithelium sits on connective tissue, and it's separated by a basement membrane. The cells of the epithelium have pink cytoplasm and blue nuclei, and the healthy cells have round nuclei. In normal healthy epithelium, the cells will move off the basement membrane, mature and get smaller as they move towards the surface of the epithelium. Human papillomavirus is a sexually transmitted disease, and although many people who are infected with human papillomavirus will go on to clear the virus naturally without any medical treatment, there's still over 500,000 high-grade precancerous lesions diagnosed in the United States annually. There's also over 12,000 cases of cervical cancer diagnosed in the United States annually, and over 4,000 deaths from cervical cancer. When epithelial cells are infected with the human papillomavirus, it may prevent them from maturing or developing correctly. And when these bad cells are identified within the epithelium, this is called squamous intraepithelial lesion. And doctors will group these lesions into two categories, low-grade squamous intraepithelial lesion, or L-cell, and high-grade squamous intraepithelial lesion, or H-cell. Low-grade lesions caused by HPV may resolve on their own, or they can develop into high-grade lesions. Some high-grade lesions may also resolve spontaneously, while others will go on to develop into squamous cell carcinoma, or cervical cancer. Routine screening for cervical cancer involves a pap test and usually begins at age 21 for most women. A pap test involves collecting cells from the cervix and examining these cells with a microscope. On a pap test, normal cells have small round nuclei and lots of cytoplasm. Low-grade lesions usually have coilocytes. Coilocytes are virally infected cells that display features that are not typical of healthy epithelial cells. These features are haloing, multiple nuclei, nuclei with irregular shapes, or unusually large nuclei. High-grade lesions will have larger nuclei, cells with scant cytoplasm, and cells with irregular nuclear shapes. Squamous cell carcinoma has the same kind of cells as the cells seen in high-grade lesions, but now with necrosis. Cervical cancer screening may also include testing for genetic material from the virus itself. If abnormal cervical cells are detected on a pap or HPV DNA is detected, then a doctor will perform a colposcopy. This is a way for a doctor to examine the cervix more closely. A biopsy will also be performed, where a small sample of tissue will be collected for further testing. Low-grade lesions have coilocytes, with large, irregularly shaped nuclei, which look different when compared to the cells in the normal biopsy on the left. In addition, dividing cells may also be seen in the lower one-third of the epithelium and high-grade lesions are defined by dividing cells in the upper two-thirds of the epithelium. It's the location of these dividing cells that defines low-grade versus high-grade lesions. In cases where it's difficult to tell, some of the biopsy tissue can be stained with a special stain called P16. If there is strong and diffuse staining of a significant portion of the epithelium with this special stain, then P16 is considered overexpressed, and the lesion will be classified as a high-grade precancerous lesion. In pre-invasive lesions, cells push on the basement membrane. Note the dark color and large size of the nuclei of the virus-infected cells. Also note the disorganization of the cells in this area. In squamous cell carcinoma, these atypical squamous epithelial cells invade the connective tissue. In this example, it's actually difficult to tell that this is actually cervix. When cancer cells invade, it may access lymphatics or blood vessels. And unfortunately, this can help the cancer to spread to other parts of the body. Clinically significant lesions must be removed. This is frequently done with a small metal wire loop with electrical current, known as the loop electrosurgical excision procedure, or LEAP. Note the difference between normal cervix and cervical cancer. 
Another method for removing a cervical lesion is called conization, where a cone-shaped sample of tissue is removed, and for larger lesions, a trachelectomy, where the cervix is removed, or a hysterectomy, where the entire uterus and cervix is removed. Chemotherapy and radiation may be required, as well as removal of lymph nodes which may contain cancer. Although there are other types of cervical cancer, over 99% of cervical cancers are caused by the human papillomavirus. HPV infection is preventable. Avoiding unsafe sexual practices and getting the HPV vaccine are proven methods for preventing transmission of HPV. HPV vaccination involves three shots over the course of six months. Routine vaccination is recommended for both males and females at a age 11 or 12. Young men and women who have not received the HPV vaccine when they are younger may be able to receive it up to age 21 or 26. The HPV vaccine also protects against other types of HPV-related cancers. An HPV screening test may someday replace the pap test as a superior method of detecting cervical cancer. Last year, more than 500,000 women worldwide were diagnosed with cervical cancer, which is caused by the human papillomavirus. This cancer can be avoided through HPV vaccination and safe sexual practices. A pap test can detect the HPV viral effect and lead to treatment which decreases your chance of developing cervical cancer. For more information, speak with your doctor about cervical cancer and HPV screening.